Buddy Ophelios as Dignitas will steal that one away. They will run back the bottom lane they played in game one mm -hmm. here with Ophelios and Braum. Yep, Ophelios taken away. They want to split up the Danny Ophelios plus Thresh combination. Very dangerous. Last time around, we, we still saw the Varus lock in. There's a lot of, you know, options here with Thresh. Super easy to just go right back to that one. Three games of Varus. There for Danny in the series. Bottom side, you've got your defenses for the Aphelios in your Braum, though. So, uh, you know, Aphromu and Neo feeling very confident. Last time around for Dig, um, you know, when we had the you know, lack of very proactive engagement in their team comp, though, it really showed up towards the mid and late game stages. So, yep. Braum is definitely not your main person for getting off engages much more disengage or counter engage for your team so they tack on the nar here for fake god to allow very versatile top lane you can play the lane multiple ways it's, it's definitely good for blind picking because you can go defensive boomerang farming or trying to you know get aggressive early on if you have a very good matchup so i do like this open possibility here i get a little worried though if aframu is not your main engage and he's on a bit more defensive brom look so yeah. see if they can supplement that with a bit more offensive look later on in the draft this is probably going to be then bans for solo lanes coming through uh, we do get the diana taking off ap jungle possibility and really trying to funnel you know, dig toss into more AD routes. I'm curious then, will they also ban the Gragas? Because Acadian showed us last game how impressively he can play that champion, how he can pilot that, his barrels, his ults, everything was where it needed to be. And yes, there it is, banned away. Yeah, both of the APs taken down. Meanwhile, I do really like the Rise ban for Dignitas. Just target ban Jizuke, one of his best champions, one of the most influential champions for him and a very strong split pusher that would be very difficult for to deal with since dig want to team fight once again they're creating a five on five they don't want to get split pushed to death by jizuke rise so i think that's a really important ban for them in the second round and we'll see what he goes with here it's going to have to be jizuke revealing first and counter pick will go to yusui and hey we got the acadian volley bear i I believe it was last week, or maybe it was the week before. Either way, at one point here recently, after he won a game on Volley Bear, he tweeted like, <laughs> I'm just so good at the bear, dude, or something along those lines. So I'm looking forward to see a Chad Volley Bear performance out of Acadian. Let's see how Evil Genius is going to complete that draft. We do get the cannon there for impact in the top lane. So Yordle on Yordle combat here in the top side of the map as our final pick this draft will be Lucian there in the mid lane for Jizuke. And this is the buffed up cannon extra Q damage here. So impact a legacy cannon player with his hands on the biggest possible AOE team fight AP wiping damage and a strong lane. This to me gets EG multiple checkboxes from me flowers. You asked what they're getting. I said the team with multiple winning lanes, plus they have the capabilities of pushing this and get it down in, in the first place. Right. Like you can you, have your hollowed ground over yeah. there in middle of nowhere. Yeah, you, you don't have to kick anyone off of the ultimate if you just kick the kindred away and then the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> is down there in the river. All righty. Let's see if they can get it done. Dignitas and Evil Geniuses both with one win under their belt here in this best of five. Level one, it's Dignitas once again, grouping up and ready to go. Yasui will be mid lane here. He will see Jizuke. Aframu steps forward, he'll find Ignar, but uh, okay, a little trade back and forth. Couple autos for a winter's bite. Comes out right about even. Not much more to see. No ward left behind either. So just a little very hesitant move. And once again, I think all three games to me, EG has had the better level one. They've gotten more information. Dignitas have made swipes trying to get early cooldowns or a summoner spell. You know, they tried top, they tried bottom. Now they try invading towards red. But mm -hmm. every single time, EG gets more information off the back half of it. It hasn't resulted in anything really big, especially with, you know, how swingy the, the mid and late stage game uh, has been in this series, but right. I would still say EG have had the better openers every single time. And this time, they get the ward on the back of red because of it. Good job there by Impact. Waits around for the full duration, so they're going to see Acadian start topside. And Volley Bear is, is uh, definitely one that wants to try and impact some lanes early on. You can definitely full clear, especially ever since he got the buffs to the E. Feels quite nice early on, but you're always looking at 
especially if you have an early ward on buff start, trying to protect the other half of the map. Ooh, nicely done there by Yasui, sidestepping away from the piercing light. And Jizuke will not be able to get the better of him too much there in that early trade. As down here in bottom side, let's remember exactly how things went last game because it got spicy nice and early. And hey, here's your reminder. Like I said in game number one, Proview switching up every match here in the best of five. And here in game number three, we're looking at Ignar and Afro Moo. So if you want to step up your support game, check that one out, see exactly how the pros are playing it. As Neo and Afro will hit level two first. They're marching forward after Danny, but Danny and Ignar walk away. Yeah, easily avoid the level two power spike. So should be normal lane states. As we said, the cannon early advantage on the NAR pushes Fate God into tower. Those cannon buffs just feel so nice. And he started with the Doran's blade. Again, you don't have to super invest in your lane phase to be able to have a strong one nowadays. Right. You can just go with the Doran's blade, then go to the AP build so you can have those bigger ultimates for the team fights towards the mid stages of the game, transition towards Dragon quite easily. Meanwhile, Tezuka does get the early push onto Yasui and he, he recalls for the early buy. Remember, he does not have, uh, have teleport, so that wave's gonna get all the way into the tower. He has gone with the extra exhaust here, so yeah. even if his ultimate, uh, you know, doesn't time out perfectly or people get kicked off of it, he's got the extra exhaust for the cannon for the team fight. It's always such a big summoner spell. And with him and Aframu rotating cooldowns on their exhaust, they should be able to always have one exhaust for the team fight and try to shut down impact that way. Yeah, that's the thing that immediately came to mind for me is it'll be so difficult for Impact to find that window as Contracts jumps in there and yoinks for the Scuttle Crab. He will not allow Acadian to take that one. However, worth pointing out on the other side of the map, that's where the Kindred Mark spawned. That's where Yasui's looking. The mark in Ooh, terms of him. how many you need is four. That's what Yasui is aiming for. Contracts continuing to track Acadian here in the jungle. We'll see how they juggle this Krug aggro back and forth between them. Both junglers almost having their smite ready. You know, Contracts wants to steal away the big Krug here too. Goes for it, gets it. Acadian wanted to time his smite there with a lightning bolt, but the delay was too slow. And once again, this is why we highlight every single game for this EG lineup. And they've got winning lane for impact. They've got Jizuke pushing <laughs> in as well. Contracts continues to go for these fights in the jungle, contesting him it. at every single turn. I love it. Aframu and Neo taking some damage here in the bottom lane. Ignar letting those hooks fly as Danny is pulled to safety by a lantern, making sure that they don't lose too much health in retaliation there. Nice little early game lead here for the side of Evil Geniuses as Impact continues just slamming this top lane. 28 to 17 in terms of farm. Yeah, he's got a few extra minions alive here in the lane, but not enough to make up that difference. As we said, Impact, legacy cannon player. Very happy with the state of the champion right now. Able to get priority for his jungler to invade. And they know now after reset should be bottom side Volibear. They did get plenty of security with their Scuttle Crab, though, so should be able to avoid the extra aggression coming out. And Evil Geniuses, their next next move here is off of Ignar Reset. Try and make some sort of play with your support jungle. Because you have your lanes in such strong states, keep up your aggression. Contracts immediately goes for it. You even see Ignar trailing. So he had the option of whenever you reset and go through mid, you can come follow or you can go right back down to lane. Because of the reset though, and them seeing Ignar go through mid lane, that's gonna prompt the same from Dignitas, and they bring everybody up here to try and contest. He's gotta get out of there after the Raptors. Yup, Contracts looking to steal this one away. Acadian's gonna be pulled back in here with a death sentence. Contracts running all the way out with Jazuke dashing over the wall. Yasui, first blooded by the evil geniuses. That is not what the Kindred needs to be doing. The comms there, Flowers, you know are, hey, we just reset bottom side. We've got both coming. We see still Varus bottom side. Neo's just itching to get into this. We have numbers advantage. And yet, even on the run, Contracts and Jizuke are looking for the kill. Contracts lands the Q, just immaculately done by him onto Yasui. Both summoner spells down for the Kindred, and they kill him and push him in. What an outplay here from the evil geniuses. Three versus four on reset. The slower moving champions here with Dig. There's no surprise dash out of Aphelia, so. Oh boy. Well, there is impact going in there for the flash engage with a slicing maelstrom. Fake God gets away. Acadian right next to him. 
guarantees his safety. Evil Geniuses with the multi-man rotation into the top lane here will not get the kill. But this is just more of the show being run. Thank you, sir. That is not a good lane state here for Mr. Fake God. I'm in your brain. <laughs> yeah, on the same page, man. It's going to still be an effective flash trade there from Impact because massive minion denial, wave bouncing back now for them. This is how you want to play off of, you know, drafting like this for your strong lanes and your jungle continues to invade. You see contracts there, takes away the red. They still continue to put up these points of pressure. However, Dignitas getting something on the backside, consolation prize of the dragon. This is paid for by the gold deficit. You see here, FTX gold advantage 1.5 for Evil Genius is still here in the early game due to all their aggression. And we haven't even approached the eight minute mark here for Rift Herald yet. You expect them to continue to keep up this pace since they have the advantage of pre-existing deep wards from all of these invaders already pulled off. Should be an easy you know, Rift Herald follow up for them. So yes, they have paid the price of the dragon, but they should be rewarded with gold. Okay, Jazuke will continue maintaining pressure here in this mid lane. Yasui just not in a good spot to be able to fight back against this Lucian. Lethality on the menu here once again, not just for the Varus, but also for Lucian here in the mid lane. Both of them having that serrated Dirk nice and early. Both of them with the tier in inventory stacking towards that Muramana for the incredible mid game power spike that that provides. So Evil Genius is scaling up, looking good. Nearly about to grab that first plate. Nearly. <laughs> all, right, it's not, it's, all right, it's not there. One more shot from Jazuke will be able to cash in. And since the jungler has recalled, he might be able to get it. As far as the builds, too, yeah, I, I'm a really big fan still of the Gale Force Shirelia, uh, Shireldas, uh for Lucian builds. But I definitely see, especially in this game, the idea for going for you know, Eclipse plus Muramana. The, the mid-game mid, mid sp game spike is incredible with that. Mm -hmm. Muramana, once you get that transformation, so much damage on your abilities as well. And it does kind of round out with a lot of their early game focus to have a way to end the game quite nicely. But man, the the Gale Force Shireldia's grudge is so, so clean. Being able to have the slow on your ultimate, you can chunk people out before the team fight even starts. Also gives you some early armor penetration for things like Braum, oh, like boy. Gnar, like... Uh... Hey, talking about Gnar, he's having a bad time. He's at 200 HP. Jazuke just oh, emptied my. the whole magazine into him, dude. There was no way out of that one. Making mini Gnar just look like a stuffed teddy bear. <laughs> Pops him open, all the fuzz Man, is on the ground. He just emptied the Uzi into a teddy bear. That ain't right. Evil geniuses. They get the Rift Herald. They're summoning it up in the top lane. They got to try to keep their bottom laners alive. They're doing so for now. Ignar getting jumped on. Goes for the death sentence. Looking to at least get one back. Tower. Acadian's taking low. Danny's still looking for a bit more damage here. Acadian at 300 HP stays alive. And Dignitas try to strike back here in the bottom lane. Very good cross map play from Dig because they cannot salvage the teddy bear on top side. Flowers. No, that <laughs> teddy bear is gone, that, gone. That teddy bear got 80 rounds into him. And so <laughs> you have to, have to do something on the other side of the map. You can't just give up. Uh, as EG push very far ahead. Yeah, it's still an advantage EG play. You know, they, they get two towers for it. They get the early kill, but at least Dignitas gets something back for themselves. They dive on bottom side. They force Varus off of the wave in addition to getting the kill and flash out of Ignar. Things are looking bad for Fake God here in this game, man. He's just not got the break points that he needs in terms of his economy. 86 to 49 CS. He's got a Phage and a Null Magic Mantle in his inventory. Things are not good for this guy who's going to need to jump into the middle of team fights to be a disruptor, to cause that chaos and take that aggro. It's rough. Dignitas is going to be challenged here in these team fights, or the challenge might be too much, and they just have to abdicate objectives, abdicate these early goals. We've got the next Drake of the game spawning here in under 90 seconds, with Evil Geniuses commanding nearly a 4,000 gold lead. They've got a lot of problems <laughs> racking up here. Yeah. Your, your problem list is getting very, very long for Dignitas. Their, their defense it actually consists mostly of these cooldowns of the double exhaust timers, Braum CC, and Kindred Ultimate. Their defenses are not in their champion items. They, those actually don't exist. These are these are <laughs> brawlerish items. You mentioned how far Nar is behind. Uh, Acadian, you know, is going for the Divine Sunderer build, so that's not 
incredibly tanky itself either. You can, in 1v1 scenarios, have a lot of time to sustain because you get more heal off of it. Yeah. But not for team fights. You don't really have that luxury, especially when there's big damage coming from Kennen, Lucian, Varus. It's just EG have just so much more damage at their fingertips, and it's harder to get off the damage types that Dig have invested in with a mid lane Kindred who's been pushed in and the Aphelios who's still trying to scale up a bit. Look at the Mythics online for Evil Geniuses. One, two, three, four rolls over on the side of Dignitas. Only one fully completed item in the Essence Reaver. Contract's coming in uh, to make the play. It goes the from bear. bad to worse for fake god. See, that was a bigger teddy bear, at least. You know, they went to the fair and first time around. Oh, they, they won the prize at, yeah. the, at the carnival. The first time around, they only won the small one. <laughs> and now they won the big one. Now they got the big teddy bear. There you go. But it got messed up just as bad as the first one did. <laughs> Yeah, well, too bad. Uh, too, back, too bad. Back so to the sad. consolation prize of dragons, Flowers. Okay, well, Dignitas will at least be able to take this one down. It will not be a Cloud Soul here again. We'll see which soul we get between the ocean and the mountain. Ocean Soul, that could be very important for the likes of the Gnar and the Volley Bear and the Braum in particular being these meatballs here yeah, for the team yeah. fight, but they still would have two more Drakes to secure to hit that point. Evil Geniuses, of course, do not want to allow that to continue, and you can bet that they are going to be ready to challenge here at the next one of those dragons that spawns. Under a minute left before turret plates fall, and Jazuke will pick up another 160 gold with his pressure on the mid lane tier one. Man, there is so much pressure on Neo's shoulders right now. And yes, Neo and Aphromoo have been one of the real bright spots for Dignitas, but man, this Aphelios is going to have to do so much work if Dignitas are going to win this game. And, and it's hard. You've got double exhaust on your team, Kindred Ultimate on your team, Braum on your team, and and Nar trying to get Nar ultimates for you. But even with everybody trying to set that up, it is going to be incredibly difficult because he has so many flank angles to worry about, plus longer range damage to deal with from from Varus coming over the top. Not only are Kennen and Lee Sin looking for those flanks plays on you over and over and over, but uh, you're going to have to deal with the artillery as well. So for anybody who noticed there in the mid lane, Jizuke empties the, the culling uh -huh, into Yasui. Uh -huh. He gets pulled to safety, dashes back into the turret to do damage <laughs> to the turret. He had Corrupting Pot on, so he was yeah. burning Yasui for like three damage per second from that stupid Corrupting Burn. And that's what the question mark pings are for, is why is this stupid turret hitting me? Yeah. Because Corrupting Potion did that. Remember, my friends, if you're laning with Corrupting Potion, be careful about the turret aggro. You're going to take a couple extra shots if you aren't paying attention. Turret falls there in the bottom lane. First one of the game that Dignitas has secured for themselves. All right, fishing around in some dangerous territory down here because Impact does have teleport. So mm -hmm. the attempts for for Dignitas here to clear out the wards, you know, you're, you're trying to remove as many dive options that your opponents have onto your Aphelios by sweeping through, make sure there are not teleport wards being left behind in the area that your Aphelios is playing. Yeah. So, hey, Aphelios is playing bottom side. We try and sweep through the jungle, get everything out of the out of the woodwork here so that, you know, Impact's not level 11 cannon ulting in behind him and, and blowing him up. But even with that, it's a very easy retake for EG. And you see them just move immediately right back through their jungle, even though it was previously in Dignitas territory. Uh, they can just hard shove straight up mid and push them back under their own towers. Yeah, Evil Genius is feeling confident here, playing aggro with that big lead that they have 15 minutes into the game 5k ftx total gold here on the side you can see it's a 2000 lead over the next God. closest person in the game for jizuke <laughs> and by the way there's lamp <laughs> respite you see we had to use that just to not die flowers they told me the imports were getting paid too much but jizuke is taking it to extremes here what is that gold lead by man He's got all the turret plates to himself. He had the, the tower kill to himself. He's got two of the three kills of the team to himself. Rich. That That is one a rich man. And guess oh, what? It's man. also going to be an early conversion on the two-item power spike we're highlighting for the Lucian since he did go with the Eclipse Muramana. Uh, as we're looking for, this is going to be a very, very early power spike for him. Once that thing transforms, so much damage out of the abilities too. It is an insane mid-game power spike that's actually coming quite early game because of how rich he is. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I have not been impressed with Kindred mid from what I have seen so yeah, far. I've seen a couple in my day. 
and I kind of wish it I didn't. Look like what yeah, I'm not really, I'm not excited about Kindred Mid. I'll put it that way. I just... will say the biggest point to me for it was your point about trying to counter Ken in Ultimate. Yeah. That's about it. That seems like what you're kind of banking on here because in terms of its lane presence, it's it, it's not there. <laughs> it doesn't have that. It's up against Lucian. Ah. It's not working. So I hopefully soon here we can check in on the mark count. I don't believe he's at four because they've just not had any control over the map. Jazuke, uh -oh. again, this culling is getting ults. It's getting summoner spells. It's doing it all alone. And that is literally the most important summoner spell in the game that he just burned. Yeah. The flash, a flash off of Aphelios. That is the number one most important summoner spell in the game. And Jazuke gets it with his Justice Ultimate. Not a good trade deal for the Dignitas boys. Now they will continue trying to defend underneath the tier two turret here. Evil Geniuses keeping that push going. Four man squad setting up. Meanwhile, they've got Danny over there in the mid lane applying pressure there. They want to make sure they're constantly threatening more than one place, making it so Dignitas has to make these choices. Now with impact back in the top side, Yasui must retreat. Guess uh, what? Contract's deleted somewhat. <laughs> yeah, we got a Cadian already dead. I was I was expecting to see a little bit more. I didn't even see a Cadian die. By the time the camera panned over, I just see the Brahm ulti. I'm like, oh, okay, we don't really have a fight breaking out. And I <laughs> and didn't even notice the dead volley bear. Oh man, I realized they're all stuffed animals, flowers. Yep, everybody. It's, it's the it's the it's the astronaut meme. <laughs> all of Digger's all stuffed, stuffed animals. animals. Now Always the, was. The bear just got. Karate kicked across the screen. You didn't even get to see him <laughs> no. before, before he went poof. He just got destroyed. And I have been updated all behind the scenes. The producers have told me, you see, he's got two marks. Hmm. That's, okay. uh, that's not enough. Yeah, I mean, mid lane, Kinto has a much more difficult time at, at getting them because it's a lot harder to go for your jungle invades, especially since they didn't have oh. any level one priority. They didn't have any winning lanes. Yeah, there it is. That's animal abuse. Goodbye, Volley Bear. Got we it. will see you soon. <laughs> I, I was one of those angry kids. It's like, yeah, here's the stuffed animal, Teddy. Uh, you, you, you happy now? No, he just kicks it off into the trash can. Oh, I didn't no. want the bear. Oh. I wanted the, I wanted the gnar. Oh no, it's a Karen child. They're spoiled, rotten, and they aren't thankful for nothing. And they're just yeah. throwing their stuff against the wall. You hate to see it. Evil geniuses with an incredible lead. 19 minutes in, man, and it's almost 8K. How do you even fight this as Dignitas? I feel like you're pretty much praying for evil geniuses yeah. to screw up and overcommit to a Baron again or something. Yeah. Because other than that, how do you even make the choice? There's two options. Well, option one, no, number one here is Aphromoo charge at him. He's got two stacks on his passive. He exhausts him. They're really chasing this one down. They want contracts. They're going after him. They're going in and they found the kill. Yasui now with a Lamb's respite. Death Sentence pulls Aphromoo right back in, but he is doomed. Goodbye, good night. Aphromoo has been killed off, but we only got ourselves a one for one so far. Neo's got about 200 chakrams spinning around there and they don't want nothing to do with that. So everybody walks away. Yeah, actually, an extra escape here means only Aphromoo goes down. I thought Evil Geniuses were going to claim two for one in the exchange. And yet, Dignitas pretty happy to at least trade one for one here on even terms. You get a little bit of gold, but they expended both exhausts on the same timer. And we were talking about desyncing the timers for your exhaust, so you always have one ready for Kennen. Guess what? Your Braum exhaust is down for your pick onto the Lee Sin, and then once you get hit with the Varus chain, very nice stuff there from Danny, lands his chain, spreads onto Dew. You think they're going to be able to get it, but he didn't land his E onto Yasui, and Yasui flashes out to escape and live another day. They also had to expend the other exhaust on the same timer once Impact got here to ensure that the rest of them were not chased down. Yeah, now things are scary. Now you've got flash ready cannon. Mm -hmm. as Evil Geniuses demands attention around the Baron Pit. EG knows that if Dig try to meet them on fair open ground, that they will slam that fight. Fake God and Acadian, both of their Divine Sunderers and their, what's that stupid thing called? Now, steel Caps, their Divine Sunderers and their Steel Caps are not very Kinnon proof, my friend. <laughs> I have faith you're gonna get there, baby. <laughs> the Steel Caps. No Come on, longer. man, I've been playing since 
since 2009. I had 10 years at Ninja Tabby. I, I could see Ninja Tabby just rolling around in your head. Yeah, I was like, like, get, get out, of out of here, you stupid Ninja Tabby. What's the name of the red shoe? <laughs> steel caps. That's It is a steel cap, and it don't do a thing against Kennen's ulti. That is the important part. Also, a you stopwatch know? here for Impact. Since, since I worked in, uh, oh, at oh. PC Neo once again, the okay. Bye -bye victim of a, another <laughs> Jazuke ultimate here. Uh, working in industry, in the factories, you have to wear steel plated or steel capped boots as well. Yeah, very boots. Very effective um, for for working around heavy machinery. Not so effective versus big like cannon it. ultimates. Yeah, impact. <laughs> Impact has uh, some other answers for you, so it's it's gonna be scary here. Those exhaust timers, you can just look at them. They're taken away. They're counting down the days until they get to use those again to try and ward off this scary cannon. But Impact is looking to make the big play. He's got his flash. He's got his stopwatch. So we shall see if evil geniuses get their wish. Just start up Baron. Is all you have to do to try and draw Dignitas out to you? There goes contracts. Well done. Jazuka is in there for the DPS, and the rest of the team is screening. And I remember the first time that I wore uh, steel-toed boots back when I was a teenager. I just went out into the garage and kept dropping heavy stuff on my foot. Just amazed at the fact that <laughs> That it sounds hurt. like a flowers thing to do. You yeah, gotta, yeah, you gotta test awesome. them. <laughs> yeah, I had to make sure that they were really as good as advertised, right? Some real power. Please tell armor. me you did not try and drive a forklift over them. No, though. I didn't try to, to drive any heavy yeah, machinery okay. over them or anything, but we dropped some heavy stuff on there. Now, let's see. If evil geniuses can just drop the hammer on Dignitas here, Dig's health bars are already Outro, completely gone. Outro. They have no way to contest this. Everybody except Neo is already almost dead. Impact's chasing after Acadian, wants to make sure there's no way that Dig can try to steal this out. There's your exhaust down to Impact now. Ignar looking to play defensively here. Goes for the play, goes for the stopwatch. <gasps> Stasis is in, Lamb's respite is down. Baron's at about 1,000 HP. Evil Genius is looking to take this out. They're going to get the kill onto Afromu as well. Evil Genius is with the Baron secure. That was slick, Ignar. That was slick. He goes onto Lamb's Respite. He gets the ultimate. He death sentences his first, though, and then walks over to the edge, flashes into Baron Pit, so he doesn't die. But he locked in Afromu long enough for him to die. And his two kills and Baron over to the evil genius's flowers. Wrap this one up, baby. It it's is going to be two to one shortly. It is done, man. 24 minutes in with this kind of a lead, with these champions and these items. You said that you like seeing the Sorelda's Grudge Muramana combination on Lucian. Well, hey, look at that. Jazuke is ready to go. Here's another look at how this fight honestly never really even happened. Dig just got chunked out of ever having the possibility. Yeah, so exhaust early there on Danny, so he just walks away. And he even walks back to land another arrow. Danny has just been pelting out the damage. Aphromu had this flash forward that was actually quite nice because he avoided the E kill. That would have killed him from Danny, and he got his ultimate off. He then still goes back in, gets his exhaust down to delay impact, but my cool play was down here with Ignar. Okay. Out of his zonias, he gets back onto the lands respite, but then he lands the death sentence, flashes over the wall. He kept Yusui in there. Oh, it was actually on Yusui. It wasn't on Aphromu. He baited Aphromu But it Aphromu kept Aphromu in. close to Exactly. Protect. He was protecting Yusui, who was the target of the death sentence. Then, meanwhile, back to base. Catch us up. Well, we have Acadian trying to bonk contracts on the head, but he ain't got no money, so the bonk doesn't hurt. That's pretty much where we are, my friend, as it's evil a, it's geniuses. It's a stuffed animal bonk. bonk yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that. one of those little... It's cute. Yeah, one of them cute little fluffy bonks. But hey, that's about all they got. Afromu, with his shield up, those bullets just chew through him. And evil geniuses continue the pressure in all three lanes. A 1-2-2 two, two split as Ignar hovers between bottom and middle lane, ready to protect whoever might get jumped on. Mid Dude. lane, tier three is the first one to fall. Top lane, tier three, still having most of its health left. Impact is pushing more slowly as the one lane that only has a single man there. Bottom lane, tier three turret now gone too. Jazuke takes care of that. They're waiting on the next waves. They've still got that Red Bull Baron for another 45 seconds. Top lane, tier three, goodbye. Okay, now we have to see those inhibitors themselves go down. Acadians into the back line. Aphromu going to be pressured now as contract stuck in the middle going into the stasis. Neo is going to be the first one to die, and the fight is over. The game is over. Dignitas is over. Evil geniuses absolutely slam game number three and take the dub in 26 minutes. Tezuka on the Lucian mid. He had his worst game of the entire split on Lucian mid that everyone remembers for the tower dog. Oh, yeah. But this was one, one of the best of the entire year. Yep. Absolutely stomps mid lane. That Kindred 
did nothing but run back to base or ult people and then flash away and try and run back to base again. That Kendra might as well have been on level six, Evelyn, dude, just invisible the whole game. Did not ever seem to have a real impact. The biggest impact that he had was the fact that Jizuke just wasn't able to farm kill him because he had Lamb's Respite to survive the callings underneath the tier two turret. The mid lane Kindred, big thumbs down for me. Hate it. We are <laughs> not going to use it on masterminds. <laughs> I am glad to hear that because that's the thing. You have a, a severe responsibility to the community. If you put that out there and show people to do it, they're going to do it. You just saved so many people's solo queue by not playing. I know. Kindred. If they watch, the, if they watch some of the games that we've already seen of it, they're going to need to. <laughs> All right. Well, before we toss to another break here after game number three, with the news about moving our championship back to L.A., we're feeling extra grateful for everyone hanging out with us on Twitter and Reddit and sharing the love on the broadcast. Thank you guys so much for all that. And Twitter user at Murua117, as an extra special thank you for chilling with us on social media, we are sending you a fancy new mouse and keyboard, courtesy of our peripherals partner here, Rocket. Yes, look, Kobe, you could be a wonderful peripherals model if thank the you. LCS ever ends up not being your flip passion it anymore. Way. Too. Oh, yes. Oh, oh look goodness. at that. The man's got skills. Now, and oh, look at that. Yes, we already also have our lovely winner has responded to our producers. We absolutely love to see it. The producers are not evil bots trying to scam you guys out of your credit card number. I have had people before send me DMs on Twitter saying, hey, is this person legit? Because they told me I just want some free Rockat stuff. And I'm like, yeah, it's one of our producers. You should trust them. They're cool people. Sounds it just like what an evil bot would say. Hmm, truly. What is the right choice?